What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, I'm going to be going through the 2024 AP pre-calculus free response question number one, which covered function concepts. I'm gonna go over the entire problem, all the solutions, break it all down for you so you can see how you did. So here was the question. The figure shows the graphs of the function f on its domain from negative 3.5 to positive 3.5 inclusive. The points negative 3 comma 1, 0 comma 1, and 3 comma 1 are on the graph of f. The function g is given by g of x equals 2.916 times 0 0.7 raised to the x. Now, the first question, or part A, or section A, part 1, says the function h is defined as h of x equals g composed of f, meaning we're going to take f, plug it into g. Find the value of h of 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. All right, this is really, really simple. So all we got to do is take 3, first plug it into f, which we could see from the graph. We're going to get an output of 1. Then we're going to take that 1 and plug it in to g. So here's me breaking down that work. First plugging 3 into f, we clearly get 1 on looking at our graph. We were also told that 3 comma 1 was one of our points on function f. Then we're going to take 1 and plug it into g, 2.916 times 0 0.7 raised to the first. Definitely want to grab and use your calculator for that, but we get 2.0412. Fairly simple. All right, part two of section A says find all values of x for which f of x equals one or indicate that there are no such values. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the graph of f and we're going to look at one and we actually see that there are three points in the domain where we equal one. Now, if I draw a red line here, we can clearly see those three points and we were also told these three points are at x equals negative three x equals 0, and x equals positive 3. At all three of those locations, we have an output value of 1 for function f. Nice and simple. All right, moving on to part B here. Uh, this part deals with g of x. So the first part says find all values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x equals 2 and or indicate that there are no such values. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn that g of x into a 2 and then we'll begin our solving process. And here we go. The first step is to divide both sides by the 2.196. Then to get rid of the x in the exponent or to bring that x down, we're going to turn this into or, or from an exponential statement into a logarithmic statement. So we get log base 0 0.7 raised to the 2 divided by 2.916. And if you type all that into your calculator just like that, you should get an output value of 1.0572 for x. Now, if you have a TID4 calculator, you could choose the log of any base where we could actually create a log of base 0.7. If you don't, you have to use the change of base property where we could use log of 0.7 or excuse me log of the 2 divided by 2.916 divided by log of 0.7 either way we get a value of 1.0572 not overly difficult all right then for part two we're asked to determine the end behavior of g as x increases without bound and they do want us to use uh, uh limit notation so what we want to do is we want to find the limit of our function g of x and it says as we increase without bound that means as x goes towards infinity now a couple things that we could do to get this answer first we can understand what's happening here you guys should know that this is an exponential function and based on my ratio my, my b value being less than one we know this is going to be a decay function and we should all know that a decay function is going to look like this so as we get further and further to the right, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to get closer and closer to zero. Now, if you don't remember that, you are allowed to use your calculator on this particular problem. So you could go ahead into y1 and graph 2.916 times 0 0.7 raised to the x. Take a look at the graph. and We could actually see exactly what I just drew, a function that's decaying. So we have that horizontal asymptote at zero, and we're going to get closer and closer and closer to zero, but we're never going to get there. That leads us to the limit of g of x as x increases without bound going towards infinity of equaling zero. Again, not too bad. You can either make the graph or you can know what an exponential decay function looks like. All right, now moving into part C. Part C is a two-parter, but the second part is just asking us to explain the first part. Determine if f has an inverse function. Give a reason for your answer based on the definition of a function. Now, that's really important. They want us to actually base on the definition of a function, which is that every input has exactly one output. So here's my answer. No, f does not have an inverse function. If we did inverse function, then we would have several inputs that have more than one output, which violates the definition of a function. 
For example, we already know that there are three points f of x or on f of x, the three points that were highlighted, negative three comma one, zero comma one, and three comma one. If we were to inverse those points, what we do is we switch all of our x's and y's, that would produce three points of one comma negative three, one comma zero, and one comma three. And now if that was allowed to be an inverse function, well, we would have one input of one, which with three different outputs, negative three, zero, and three. And well, that violates the definition of a function. We can't have one output leading to three different, excuse me, one input leading to three different outputs. So pretty easy there. I mean, obviously there's other answers we could use. Like even if we look at two, obviously um, when we inverse this, the input of two is also going to have three different outputs at those approximate values, but might as well use the three points that were given to us that we know exactly what they are. And if we inverse them, well, the input of one is going to go to three different outputs and that just cannot be. So that's it. Not too bad of a problem. Hopefully you guys did pretty well in this question and you got all six points, one point for every single part.